What up, bros? And welcome to Brown Meets World. When it's Brown Meets World. Your boy meets world fun cast. I'm Siege. And I'm Tony Curtis. Um, well, here's, here's a little announcement. Um, something we're trying right now is we are currently live streaming um, this episode on Twitch. Um, we've never live streamed before. We know very little about Twitch. So please forgive us during this time where we're kind of learning. But we're, yeah, we're, we're trying this out. We're trying to see if um, this would be easy to do, something that we can keep doing. Um, and if you guys uh, are in, enjoy a live stream, definitely um, check out our Twitch page. Whenever I hear Twitch. I think of Teen Witch, but again, that's Teen me. Witch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is episode 109. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, I, I mean, like, before we dive into the episode, like, 2022, that Siege, we are. How, 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 how's your new year been so far? It's, it's been a year. <laughs> Not, you know what? It's been different than 2021 was at this point in time. But it's still like, you know, you, you got your feelings, you're moving through. I think at this point in time, we're in junior year of COVID. Um, so. Junior year. That's that's a, such an interesting way of, of viewing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Really looking forward to that work study internship um, opportunity that you get in the junior year. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. See you guys uh, at COVID prom. You know, I, I, I do have to say that like... Uh, uh, there is a part of me that's like, I have to, like, I was like, oh, wow, nothing's going to surprise me. I've been through a year of COVID. I've been to two years of COVID. We had all those years of Trump. Nothing's going to surprise me. Um, but the fact that, like, literally everything is shutting down again and it's, like, a whole big thing again, I was just like, uh, I'm so sick of this movie. Like, please, like, let's Only do something worse. different. I feel like, I feel like it, we, we Jurassic parked it. So it was like, oh, you thought it was bad the first time. Well, we're on the third one, and we we've decided to expand it out, and no one cares. And it's just like, no okay, one. Well. <laughs> oh man. Um. Well. A, a, anywho, I with that all that being said, I'm very excited to kind of refocus on the podcast, Boy Meets World. Um. You know. This episode is one I've been really excited to talk about with you. I don't know what your history is with this episode. Um, I remember I, I this don't. episode pretty vividly. Um, and I will say right off the bat, it was as terrible as I thought it was. Um, <laughs> so I, I look forward to hearing how our audience thinks about it uh, and, and getting your insights. But yeah, I looked at this one. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's everything that I thought it was. And uh, I have some thoughts and even like some of the community's thoughts on, on this. Um, I, you know what? I don't really have a, a tell me about it for uh, this episode. I apologize. Uh, I was too busy fooling around with the live stream setup. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I just want to quickly say that we are just off the heels kind of fairly recently of and then there was Sean. And this episode is like crazy, crazy meta. And I'm really excited to kind of get into that with you. Um, I'm just going to briefly off the top of my head, make something up for the tell me about it. And it Good. is what it is as improv tends to be. <clears throat> Show them people your talent. <laughs> tell us about it. Yeah, Eric's on the box. Act on stage and then TV. And Sean and... Jack have chicken pox. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Again, you. I think there's nothing wrong. You did it off the fly, and that is way more than most people would do. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm basically the Lin Manuel Miranda of podcasts. So just remember that that's going what you've forward. Been called a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been called that many times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is season five, episode nineteen. Eric Hollywood. When Eric's shoddy set design injures the star of the college play, Eric assumes his role. After a surprising, superb Shakespearean acting debut, Eric is invited to join the cast of the hit ABC hit sitcom, Kids Gets Acquainted with Universe. But when he arrives at the studio, he discovers that the shallow, egotistical, and neurotic actors are not all like their roles. Meanwhile, Topanga tries to salvage her relationship with Sean, who's not sure he can remain friends with both her and Corey in the wake of their breakup. 
after he and Jack come down with chicken pox. Wow. As wow. elaborate as that summary was is how convoluted this episode is unnecessarily. Like, we could strip so much down and then just make this episode pick pick up a plot and really, really dive in. And I'm a little disappointed that we didn't. But, I mean, they at least give us writers to yell at. And that's something. <laughs> you know, there's so much to say about this episode. I know we're going to get into it, but this is clearly one of those situations where, like, hey, Ben Savage is taking SATs. Uh, he can't be on set. Like, we need to write around this. You know, it, they've kind of talked about this in conventions that ever, whenever there was an Eric centered episode usually just ben was busy mm -hmm. um and it, clearly that's what's happening uh because i'm trying to think of it there's no reason for eric to ever have been an actor and when i say that i mean like they gave him like acting chops for one episode they don't ever do anything with his acting career after this they clearly had him being scouted by juilliard and he's like, well, I got fired from the sitcom. So I guess that's the end of acting. And I'm just like, what was the fucking purpose of even making him an actor? Other than just they had a funny idea to be meta with their show. Yeah, I will say, a, a few, I have a few thoughts on this just right off the bat. One would be that Eric actually, you know, like he wanted to be a weatherman. We see good looking guy, the television show. So like television isn't so far off. And then the idea that of course, Eric doesn't know what Julie are or the Shakespearean Academy or whatever is, but he knows what ABC is like that, like that fits. I, I'm, I'm with you, I'm following. It's literally, as you said, the fact that we give him this talent. For me, it was another example of how in the show, both Sean and Eric are like idiot savants. Like they yeah. have this natural talent, but we never really, like, I feel like in modern television, that would be like a continuous thread. You know, like they're constantly picking up things that they're just naturally good at. And it would kind of be like talked about or like another thing added, kind of like um, how Phoebe's weird in Friends. And it's just like a running joke. You hear something in the background and you're like, that's weird, but it makes sense. This is always treated as something new. And I think that's kind of the problem. Yeah, and I mean, there's one thing to make Phoebe kind of weird on the Friends. It's another thing to have Eric have mentally absorbed an entire Shakespearean play when apparently this dude couldn't even graduate high school on time. You know what I mean? Like, there's just the consistency of it is is just like, all right, well, if he's able to absorb literature in large amounts, make that part of his backstory. Like, why are we throwing this in now? He's He is, he's great at or he has a different type of intelligence. And I think that that's like, anytime we see Eric in this position, like I'm thinking about when he um, could like count cards or like whatever it was not too long ago. It's just like, Eric has a different type of intelligence and they kind of always come back to that. School doesn't necessarily work for him. And that's why he's not keeping up. And like, even again, I think if they like use that as a measuring stick to be like, isn't it amazing? Or isn't it terrible that our school structure um, hinders someone like Eric, who apparently can pick up a talent at any point in time, but just can't seem to take a test. Like, that to me is very interesting, and that's something that we could do. But instead, we just kind of get these one-offs, these scenes and scripts that don't really make sense. Uh, I have a lot to talk about just <laughs> on Eric in the beginning. Like, he killed a kid, basically, and they're like, yeah, it happens. And I'm oh. like, yo! <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's so funny, even though the storyline is so convoluted and, you know, they kind of throw us a lot at the beginning with uh, Eric acting, it was really hard to ignore Will Friedle's talent throughout the entire episode, but mostly during those Shakespearean scenes, like he kind of killed it. And, you know, there's a scene where he's acting on stage opposite of um, uh, Matthew Lawrence, uh, Jack, who apparently is in theater. Okay. Um, uh, again, I, I have things that I want to come back to, but keep going. And, uh, you know, he, he, Matthew Lawrence, I would say, like, if you were to choose Matthew Lawrence or Will Friedle, like, to your average 90s kid, they would probably be far more familiar with Matthew, Matthew Lawrence, who had some, like, acting gigs, gigs in some fairly popular movies, you know, Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, 
and it's just like really uh, surprising to see how much better of an actor Wilfredo was in those scenes opposite of of Matthew Lawrence, who has had such a more uh, successful career. So that was just one of the big takeaways that that I had in those scenes. I don't know if you thought that he had any good Shakespearean chops. No, he did. He did great in the Shakespearean scenes, and then also true to being Wilfredell the scene on set of kid meets universe uh or sorry kid gets acquainted with universe um <laughs> the scene where he kind of like is doing shakespeare but like in an inappropriate time and then he says his line and he's being real but he kind of goes back into the shakespeare in a little bit like again that's comedic timing and that's genius and i think oh. like Will Friedle clearly has a talent, and I think every now and then they really want to showcase that talent. I just wish that they wrote the script around Eric and gave that character some depth instead of kind of being like goofball of the week. Yeah, uh, and it, like I said, like it's 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 kind of shocking how much. Uh, attention he gets from his acting so early on that like again Juilliard and the Shakespearean like acting company are all there like oh hey yeah we want you as if those like those kind of scouts as if that kind of talent that attracts that kind of scouts would simply go away after a half hour like that's that's the kind of thing that kind of irked me about this whole thing and I know we can get into like the actual weeds of everything but that was just something that irked me so much about this episode yeah, absolutely. Um, again, so I just want to note because it, I found it really funny when I was doing like my half ass internet research. Um, this episode is consider, considered non canonical by most fans <laughs> due to like the really meta nature and the fact that he's visiting sets and it's just kind of like, ca like most people just write off this episode which as if it's really not funny. canon. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's very yeah, interesting. They're just like, nope. Can I give you an argument for why I think it is canon? And yeah, I, I, I completely understand people understanding that because it's almost a borderline dream sequence with, mm -hmm. uh, I know we're fast forwarding through so much, but we just have to get no. into the kid gets acquainted with the universe. It's, it's so much to talk about. For him to be on set with lookalikes of Sean, of Corey, of Topanga, and not be like, yo, Feeny, isn't this weird? We're in my living room. We're in your classroom. There is no, like, wow, we're taking this in as something that's also weird. They're like, no, this is a new person who I'm playing his brother, whatever. And that's why I can understand why people might think of it as like a dream sequence or something that shouldn't be... Um, you know, in canon, however, you have this integrated Topanga and Sean storyline, which goes along with the story arc of the last like four episodes. So that's what makes me think that possibly, with the exception of this all being a hallucination of Eric also having chicken pox in the room, I, ooh, I don't see ooh. why this wouldn't be canon, but that's just, that's just me. Here's what I will say to that. I think that um, we often talk about how Eric it, sorry, Boy Meets World is the story told through Corey's point of view. What if Eric literally did get scouted, went to Hollywood, and Corey was just like, whatever. You know, it's just like, it, he just kind of wrote it off as like, it was some show, he told me about it. Like, he didn't even pay attention to the details. Interesting. That's kind of like why we're getting what we're getting because Corey just doesn't pay attention to Eric. So if Eric did go to Hollywood with Mr. Feeney, so random. Um, yeah, that's 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 interesting. And again, the presence of Feeney there also kind of grounds it in some kind of reality too. Again, it's weird that like, yeah, but isn't it weird that we don't even have a conversation of like Alan, they don't even say, hey, Alan and Amy sent Mr. Feeney with Eric to Hollywood they just show up and it's just Feeney and Eric and you're like okay I buy it but can we get a little transition can we well, get like a line that says it's really upset that Alan couldn't take the week off from work and Amy was booked so thank you Mr. Feeney for having the time in your schedule as a teacher in the middle of the school year to come. <laughs> <laughs> Siege, I have to I have to object. There actually is a line and then maybe maybe it was missed. Okay. Fair enough. But there is a line where Eric says, thanks for coming with me, Mr. Feeney. It would have been so embarrassing to bring my parents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
but what I'm saying is you still need Alan and Amy to sign off on it. Like that's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um I and then again, let's... Mr. Free, it's the middle of the school year. This isn't spring break. It, no, it's it's literally like the end. It's like what would be a teacher's busiest time, like getting ready for finals, wrapping the end of the year up. There's a bunch of tests. Like this guy doesn't have time to fly the. Unless it's spring break, is a spring break in California with Mr. Feeney? Because that's kind of its own episode, right? That's what I'm saying. I like. I if we're going to do this, I want to get a Eric and Mr. Feeney go to Hollywood. I want to. Oh my gosh, that's the spinoff. Them. That's the spinoff. Yeah, I, I want to see them in their hotel. I want to see, like, like you know that Eric is annoying Feeney in his, like, need for, um, like, are they, do they have shared rooms? Do they have a different room? Who's putting them up? Like, I just want, I want craft table. Like, I want you to give me, yeah. we go to Hollywood and not, we had sets. We want to have some fun. Um, all the characters are playing the exact, or, like, also, I was interested to see, what you thought of or maybe you know more than i do on like the caricatures of yeah. each person because i was like was this something that they were like playing into from the media's perspective were they like taking everyone's personality and doing the opposite like i just wanted to know if you knew anything so from what i've understood and this is based off of like random like, I mean, this episode isn't super popular. Every now and then, like, um, you know, Wilfred L will comment on it at, like, a convention or something. And essentially, from again, I could be wrong, this was just the writers kind of having fun with everyone's personality. Um, I don't necessarily think Ben is uh, the drama queen that they make him out to be in this episode. I think that was more serving for the plot of getting Eric off the show. Um, but to have writer strong be extra shy to have daniel Snyder. official yeah <laughs> i love the names by the way to have daniel official be oh, like over the top and have her be this big burst of energy like it just seems like they're they're having fun with everyone so much so that like um i i wrote it down that uh ben ben sandwich <laughs> keeps yelling at a guy named matt which i think is supposed to be a replacement for for mark jacobs so like the idea that everyone is represented makes me think that even these writers are probably representative of their actual writing group, which again, is just meta for the sake of them. This is like an inside joke episode amongst the cast and crew, something that would make it to like a casting party at the end. Like, hey, we made this fun little bit. It doesn't seem like something that serves the plot at all. No, it doesn't, which is why I think most people are like, it's not canon. I mean, like, if you want to, let's get into roll call really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is to say, the reason why I want to bring it up is because we have David Jacobs, Rachel Jacobs, Joshua Jacobs, uh, Dylan McCracken, and Claire McCracken. All of these are the kids that we see play writers. And They're all just of them the kids just... of the, the producers. Wow. Exactly. Nepotism so... at its yes! best. Yes. And it's funny that you bring up nepotism because I thought that you were like Wilfredell wouldn't be known as much as um, Matthew Lawrence in the '90s, and I was like, "Oh, that's because of nepotism." Both, well, true, true. Both Very Matthew true. Lawrence and Ben Savage have older brothers who are in the industry. God, I love so. <laughs> the Fred Savage um, reference they make in the show. They're like, you might know his brother. Oh, from that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah, is so yeah. funny because I'm sure Ben Savage is so over people just being like, oh, so you know Fred Savage's little brother, right? Like, I'm sure he fucking hates that. Well, especially uh, at the time. But I don't know. I think now Fred Savage is kind of seen as, oh, wait a minute. You're the older brother of... That's generational. That is a hundred percent because we're millennials and grew up with the show. But I feel like Fred Savage is still ultimately a bigger star. You know why? Because I still see him on, on sitcom. I still see him doing like interviews. Like he was just on the Drew Barrymore show. Like he's doing stuff. I want to know what um, Gen Z, who Ooh. Gen Z goes to first. Because you're right, millennials. We're gonna go to boy meets world gen x they're gonna go to wonder years but who is gen z see first is ben savage fred savage's little brother or is fred savage little like little is fred savage, ben savage or are they rowan that's what i'm thinking like are they <laughs> girl meets world they don't even consider well, say, like ben savage is just the father of rory in girl meets world and yeah. they don't even know who ben our Fred Savage is. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. Um, but yeah, anyway. All right. So that does bring me to 
another thing that I wanted to talk about with like kids gets acquainted with universe. <laughs> Again, very, very interesting, fun long name. Is I want, I want there to be, like I, I, I think that Feeney's whole idea of what comes easily is lost easily. What comes quickly is lost quickly. That is also like another really great moment in at least in Feeney moment and him and Eric. And so that's why I kind of wish we had done a little bit more of this. Maybe even if we'd done this episode um, before they went to college, you know? So like, remember when yeah. Eric was like thinking about different schools and trying to get in? Yes. And all this other stuff? Would like, have made this much more been, sense. Yes, thank you. That's, that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, it doesn't make sense in the storyline of who Eric is this season. It doesn't play into his future at all. So yeah, control alt delete this from like your memory at the very least, because it really doesn't show up again. Um, a few things I do want to talk about, um, and I know we're, we're we're bouncing all over this pla- all, all over the place, but that happens for episodes that are kind of, you know, yeah. When um, they're all over the place, we're all over the place. There's another South Park reference in this episode where Eric says he could do a Cartman, and and so we see that yes. as we did in the and then there was Sean episode. Um, there's also the first appearance of this running joke that Will Friedle does that I love, where he can't tell the difference between the word niche and niece. Yeah. And we see this happen over and over again, and I love it. He even carries it in the Girl Meets World where he calls uh, like her his, <laughs> his niche. <laughs> and so That's it's just, a great catch. It, it happens throughout, so definitely pay attention because I think this is the first time we've seen it, but it just happens so naturally. Where he's like, I found my niece, and they're like, you mean your niche, right? He's like, ah, I, don't, I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I wonder if that was like a misread, you know, kind of like Clueless in Hadians, and I wonder if like they were like, that's amazing, just kind of like, let's write that into the script. So I, you know what I feel like? I feel like the cast had so much fun on them. There was Sean, the writers were like, we want to get in on this. Thank you. That's, so that's what I was going to say. To me, this is meta done wrong. Yes. Whereas, and then there was Sean is meta done right. 100%. I, I, I 100% agree. And it's the thing that's so like, um, annoying about it is that there's clearly so many inside jokes that are for the the staff only that like the audience wouldn't really get like him showing up to set and the producer being like let's get another hundred episodes i hope i hope i hope i hope like that is like just conversations that the cast is having no one in 1997 is thinking like oh i hope boy meets world gets a hundred more episodes like it's just something that is not a joke for us and it feels like the whole episode or his storyline however was not for us okay so there are two things to that one i agree make this like a bonus episode or like some kind of dvd cut you know like make make this that and i think we're, we would be a lot happier with it because you're not wasting our time when we have this other really juicy storyline which i want to get into next yeah but then also i do remember being like they were like okay you're the long lost brother you're coming in and i was like that's ridiculous and then i remembered that's exactly what Jack is. So I yeah. was like, and there's a little bit of being like, oh, this is so stupid and sitcom-y. And who, what kind of show would do, ah, you know what, actually, yeah. And so yeah. that's why when Jack's like, what, they got me, why they need you? It's like, they already have an older brother. Why are they bringing, he's referencing his own character. But like, again, it's not like a, and then there was Sean Witty, like, oh, wow, that was such good writing. It's just like, oh, they're clearly just being self-referential for the fun of it. And Yeah, I mean, if we're going to be meta, give us the meta that we get later on. Like, have Turner be the banana boy. Have, yeah. You know, like, like, do some kind of cameo to where we're excited that you're doing this. And, you know, like, give us more Morgan as the 40-year-old woman. Like, not saying that it's great. I'm just saying that, like, give us more Hollywood tropes that yeah. we can connect to. Um, I think the thing that's so dissatisfying about this meta experience compared to And Then There Was Sean was that And Then There Was Sean strain, like, went along with Sean's character development. It went along with the story that was has been told throughout the arc and it also furthered the story along like it's it's almost like a musical where like the song has to push the story forward and if it doesn't it's kind of a pointless song and like this felt like that where it's not pushing the story forward for eric to be an actor it would have even been interesting if like let's say sean was the one who went to hollywood and when he got there and he saw like the 
alternate versions of these characters he was able to somehow gain some insight as to like these like his actual friends like something like that would have served the story better than you know it's you're gonna do shakespeare on the sitcom and get fired or you know it's really funny i thought like because i i I remember this episode but i didn't remember the specifics i thought that like eric would see i'm sorry (laughs) <laughs> I thought that Eric would see um, the Topanga character and the Sean character talk about their problem. And then Eric would go back home and be like, hey, yeah. I know, you know, like he has like a line from the show that fits into real life. Like, that's what I thought, that he would get some kind of insight on the dynamics that are going on and then bring them back. Instead, we just like there was there was really no reason for him to go. And I think that as you said, if we change who goes or if we just simply move this episode to season four before they go to college, it automatically increases its relevance to the character. You know what I would have loved? Um, I would have loved it if he didn't go to Hollywood to become an actor at all. They scrapped this whole acting thing and they like were like, hey, we're gonna make you a professional weatherman. Like something that goes along with some shit that Eric has expressed interest in in the past. Like, let's get a, like a continued storyline going. It just, it, it's- We did do that already. We did have him be a weatherman, but I do think that that brings up the fact that they did have the commentary of like we why are we telling the exact same story We've oh done this before and i was like okay yes like even when sean's like i blew up another mailbox i was like yes it's hilarious to me that there's that noise in the background just so you know it's hilarious to me that even they are like why are we doing this over and over again but it's like you also have the opportunity to change it like Come on. Yeah, he, I, I actually thought it was really, really funny when uh, Ben Savage uh, and Kid Gets Acquainted with the Universe character uh, acknowledges that the storylines are becoming repetitive because we're in season five and we've been asking these questions like, how many times can Corey learn the same lessons over and over again? We, all the audience, are getting frustrated with it. So it's, it's at least some relief to know that maybe the actor, Ben Savage, is like, dude, what are you doing to my character? Like maybe this is some an ongoing complaint to the point where the act uh, the writers are like, well, let's throw this in as a little joke to him always wanting to tweak his character. But there is some truth behind it, and for them to be like, yeah, we know we've been shitty with this character, ha ha ha. It's not it's not like anything. It's just like, oh, so you know you've been recycling storylines. You know you've been you haven't been progressing the advancement of this character. Why would you make that into a self referential joke? Like it, it, to me, it just didn't add anything. Especially if you do it again. But also, like, another one of the, like, really, like, I know we're telling this episode apart. We're going to get into the Shang and Topanga because I yeah, think it's yeah. really important. But the, another thing that I noticed is Eric plays off of Jack in the school play. But then Jack has chicken pox. But Eric is still doing shows. And I was like, there's no, there's no mention of like, like, why did we have to injure the dude in the beginning to get Eric on stage? If Jack was going to get chicken pox and apparently can't do his role anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like why not make Jack the <laughs> star who gets chicken pox and then Eric fills in? Like, that makes way more sense than what we So know. much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say that, like, this was a, I, Matthew Lawrence was, pretty um was all over this episode and i you know earlier this season we asked the question of like do i like jack how do i feel about jack and i have to say i do not know that his character is adding much to this world you know i i was listening back to our last few episodes um and specifically the one about the drinking episode and i was like oh wow you know we have this final confrontation where we kind of learn this past about their family and I was like oh that's where Jack belongs he belongs as a part of Sean's family but like what was the point of introducing them as brothers if they're never have they never have scenes together they're never together well we have a scene and that's this is a perfect segue into our next um storyline which is Eric uh is off in Hollywood Jack and Sean, no, yeah, Jack and Sean have chicken pox. Um, of course, I have a few problems with this. 
storyline mostly because we finally get a story about Sean and Topanga being friends yeah. and Topanga literally coming over being like, Hey, I just wanted to check in on us. We've known each other for years. I know that me and Corey aren't together anymore, but I want you to understand that I still see you as a friend. Great premise of an episode. Let's dive into it. And immediately they're like, actually female, <laughs> What you're going to do is play nurse to these two sick men who apparently have never heard of the chicken pox and can only be helped by another female. um, Are we to believe that all like Corey Topanga, Sean and Jack literally got like teenager stage chicken pox? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not to say that Jack couldn't get it, but like the idea that Topanga has been exposed to it, but Corey, because even Corey is like sent away. Corey and Sean haven't. It's weird considering yeah. how how much we know they hang out with each other. And then Jack having it and um, Sean having it again. It's it's weird. It's not outrageous, but to me, it's the idea that Topanga is the only one who can take care of these two. Again, yes. it's very much reducing her. We said this. She doesn't get to be her own character. She's either mother or girlfriend, or she's all of these like stereotypical female roles, when in fact we had a great opportunity to actually have some conflict between Corey, not between Topanga and Sean and really see how that plays out. Uh, you know what? I I agree. I'm I'm really annoyed with how Topanga has been represented, and in this episode, it's kind of no different. Like, I kind of would have liked it if we just saw Topanga like being single, living single, living her best life, getting some insight to what her life is outside of being Corey's girlfriend. Because they've been broken up for like a few episodes, and she's still just Corey's girlfriend. That's her. That's her role. Yeah. Even like when they, even when. <laughs> Sean, they have that moment, that kind of heart to heart, where he's like, I've been waiting for him to say what he really thinks about you. And you want to know what he says? He still says great things about you, which would have been fine had we ended there. But instead they go, he really misses what he's lost. And it's just like, again, it's like this almost begging or positioning Corey as the wronged party here. It, like he misses what he's lost, not what he lost himself. What he ruined. <laughs> But he ruined, yeah. I still just don't understand how, like, okay, if you're going to have a conversation with Topanga, have a conversation. Sean, this wasn't my fault. I did not do this. Corey did this. If you're mad at someone, it should be Corey. Like, they don't get into that at all. Or even having Sean be like, hey, I know my friend messed up but he's my friend. You know what I mean? Like something. Yeah. We have, we have a chance to really do this. Also, if we, if we want to do that, have Topanga come over, but actually would make sense, would make a lot more sense is Topanga comes over to connect with Sean. Jack has a chicken pox. Topanga, whose parents are a little bit granola gets chicken pox and is forced to be home with be in the apartment with Jack and Sean makes so much more sense. Sean takes care of Topanga and Jack, because at that point in time, what we have is a, we're not reducing Topanga to this female role of caretaker and nurse constantly, not doctor nurse. I know that it seems small, but it's just like, we could do better. Yeah. And then also you would have a reason for Topanga to be stuck in this room with these two boys and actually have some truths come out. You know what it feels like? It feels like Danielle and Matt were dating at the time and they wanted more scenes together because we I mean, randomly will give them just scenes together that don't make sense. Like when they were dating in Corey's Christmas future episode and you were just like, why are they together randomly? That doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't make sense for Topanga to be like, Oh, Jack, let me take care of you. It just doesn't. Yeah. Why no, would she do said, that? That's why I said, Sean Topanga is the one who should get chicken pox. Yeah. Sean is the one who should be taking care of both of them. Also <laughs> another like little uh, side note. Uh, and, Maybe I could just, maybe I'll save it for my bra moment. But like, there's there's like one element where I was like, hmm, in 2022, 
has a different context, but yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you think of this idea? Because this is a question I had when I was watching the episode. Uh, Sean's like, you know, uh, a couple broke up and I had to choose sides. So what are your thoughts on the idea of like, hey, I'm friends with a couple. They have now broken up, you know, is it a choosing sides? Am I hanging out with one over the other? Is it like, well, I'm just genuinely friends with one person? Like, what are your thoughts on all of it? That's all, that's all, that's a sticky, sticky conversation. Because in my personal opinion, I've always told any of my friends this. I'm like, don't introduce me to your significant other if you don't want us to be friends after the breakup. Because I make friends with individuals. So yeah. if I'm your friend, and that's because I like consider friendship like a significant thing. If I'm your friend, then I'm your friend. And if you guys break up, I'm, I have two friends who are no longer together. Um, but also, I think it's a little bit different because Sean has known these two forever. So at a certain point in time, even if like you weren't friends, your friends just through exposure you know what i mean sure. <laughs> like how else would you describe topanga to call her an acquaintance after 10 years is a little rude you know like when you know yeah. as much about her so anyway that's that's how i feel about it but i will say um because of that i am very much like a oh you're my friend's boyfriend like i i'll know your name i don't have to get too close um but if we do get close and you guys break up i'm still going to reach out i'm still going to uh I'm not going to cut you off automatically. I do leave that up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm not the kind of person who's like, oh, you guys broke up. So I guess I'm going to block so and so on. And, you know, I'm not I'm not going to play that whole game. It's just too much energy. Um, but I do understand like the awkwardness of like, oh, it was a bad breakup. And, you know, I'm friends with the other person and, you know, I'm hanging out with the other person and like the conversations that I'm now hearing are kind of putting me in an awkward situation to the point where I don't know that I want to be friends with both of you at this stage. I will stage. say I am I am not a lifeline or a link between the two. Like that's my yeah. whole thing. Like if I if I show up and we were hanging out and you're like, oh, how's how's Topanga doing? Nope, not doing it. Like, like that's yeah, <laughs> like and and that's the thing. It seems like Sean really doesn't have a problem being this one that like they can both kind of talk to him to during this time, which is fine. I just don't got the energy for that. I don't want to be that person. So I don't know that I could um, be that like, oh yeah, tell me about like this breakup between you and like my best friend. Like I maybe that's business that's best reserved for you guys and not for me. Like, I don't know. Exactly, that's, that's my thing. But also I like the, again, to me, it's a little bit different because they've known each other for so long. If this was yeah. like some other girl, like at this point in time, we don't see her, but like if Angela, were to go to Corey and be like, hey, you know, I know that um, me and Sean didn't work out, but I still want to be your friend. That would be weird. And Corey would be in his right to be like, hey, I really appreciate it. We can always be on good terms, but I don't think it's for the best because like you, you were new. You only have like a limited amount of time and experience between the three of us. And we kind of have like this tight core group so the the fact that you and Sean didn't work out, you you probably don't have a space here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Again, I'm, unlike I'm, Topanga, I'm, who was such a big part. I'm smiling knowingly because you talk. You're you're like talking about an episode from next season. You don't even know it yet between oh, Angela and Corey. Really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know me. You know me. Uh, but again, I think like it's and it's not to say that you can't. It's just to say that it makes a lot more sense if um there's someone who's kind of been friends with the group but like there was always the group and then someone's plus one yeah that, that plus one shouldn't be around all that time you know like especially if you guys are broken up and it wasn't on good terms that's that's not a good look in in my opinion but yeah i no i totally agree like the 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 it's almost as if like you said like you when you're with a group of people it's it's kind of like family at a certain point. Like you don't have to get along, but I've known you all my life. So like, it's not like you're, I'm cutting you out either. Exactly. So. It's been 10 years. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, all I'm trying to say is Sean and like, in fact, Topanga has more of a claim to Sean than Jack does. <laughs> like, oh, you know 100%. what I mean? Like, like, like 100%. Topanga knows way more about Sean than Jack does. So it would make more sense for Jack to be cut off 
than for Topanga. And like that, like, but that's again how I feel. I look forward to hearing how our listeners feel. If you agree, if you disagree, I think that people are they have very strong opinions about staying friends with their ex. And for me, I'm like, you can stay friends with whoever you want to stay friends with. I don't need to hear about it. The moment you start coming up to me being like, yo, this is what your ex was doing or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't, I don't need to hear it. Yeah. You need to keep telling me you and I won't be friends. Yeah. Yeah. Here's something I felt when I was watching this episode. And I don't know if this thought up, up popped in your head at all. There's one point where Topanga is trying to convince Sean that he has chicken pox and she's he's like oh, how do you know or something like that and she basically like just lifts his shirt up and you see the happy trail of pubes and i was just like <laughs> abc uh whew. no because i was fixated on the chicken pox but i think it's funny that you were fixated on the happy trail. well when she lifted up his shirt it felt a little too it felt like I, uh, oh, I, yeah, I know you well enough that I can just lift up your shirt. It just felt weird. It's not something that I, I would think that someone would come up and just be like, hey, I know you well enough that I could just like, I don't know. It was, it, it, it was, it was, it was weird. It's just, again, it was just one of those things like Corey saying that he can't pee around the other guys. Like, it's just a weird thing to throw into a show. It, it is. I think that we are doing a little bit of like frat comedy or, you know, like the, they needed to show the one piece of skin he's not showing. So like, I understand it, but then also I like, to me, this echoes back to, they have a familiarity yeah, to where yeah. she feels comfortable enough to lift up his shirt where you yeah. wouldn't do that with someone you barely know. Like that's, that's a boundary, a, a trust thing. So, you know, um, I, I, I guess uh, the only really thing I have left to say about uh, this storyline was that it felt like, you know, like we said, this could have been a much more serious conversation. They could have actually addressed some of the issues. And what we could have walked away with was Sean and Topanga being like, like feeling like, oh no, they are firmly friends in their own right. And I think I was supposed to feel that and I didn't feel that at the end at all. Well, where's like, again, if we really were to do this episode right, um, we would have there be some kind of rehashing of memories, some kind of Topanga being like, no, he can't have peanut butter. You know, like something, something, or or Sean being like, um, I've always known this about you, and it's like, yeah, you're you're my, or even Sean realizing, wait a minute, I actually know Topanga better than I thought, yeah. and I shouldn't like, I shouldn't just dismiss this. You know, like just something there where it's like, oh, actually, our bond is deeper, and we kind of see it as evidence instead of. Sean just saying because Corey can't let you go I also would be sad if I let you go you know it's like yeah it just it didn't feel like there was like oh yeah you know what I've known you for years maybe you and I can bond over something that I can't bond with with Corey that would have been a great discovery for this episode something to just make it feel like that like if Corey were to just like move away tomorrow Sean would be like yo Topanga let's go to Chubby's and you I know, just don't feel that it, you know, it's really funny because I've been re-watching Grey's Anatomy, and it's funny because there are so many, like, it's an ensemble cast, yeah. so so many characters come and go, and I always, I, I find it interesting re-watching and seeing how they do have, like, these character dynamics, because you'll see, like, I know people, because I've been watching the show, who will become friends, and you kind of see, like, the first interactions that they have, and you're like, oh, it doesn't make sense that you two are friends, because of your characters, but it does make sense that you were both in this place and you bonded over this thing. And that's yeah. how you guys started becoming friends. So like, as you said, if Corey is doing whatever and Sean and Topanga, if we wanted to have an episode where Sean goes to Chubby's and gets a job and Topanga has also gotten a job. And so now they're coworkers or they yeah. get, paired up on a school project together. You know, like, there's just so many ways yeah. where we could be like, hey, you two are forced to be in the room. Or even as we said earlier, Topanga came over there to kind of be friends with Sean and ended up getting chicken pox. And so even though Sean didn't really want to pursue the friendship by being forced to stay with her, he understood how much she actually understood about him. And he realized how much he actually cares about her through taking care of her. And then we have a reason for this bond and connection. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm really interested to hear what 
the listeners think of this because i do know a few people who really dig this episode who think who, who really get off people? on like the cutesy <laughs> meta-ness of like i the, want names <laughs> like, I, and i have to say like i did write down like a few jokes from this episode that i thought were funny like uh the joke of like Oh, if only William Shakespeare himself could see this. Oh, we're, we're, he'll come next week. Like we're 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 here, <laughs> or like uh, Eric just uh, aiming being like, how do you channel all of that that range? And Eric's like, oh, it just says it right here in the script. Like there are funny things about them going to visit their own sets. Feeney being like, there's only nine classrooms. There are funny things about this because I could see why people might like this episode. But as I've discussed, because it doesn't serve anyone outside of this ep- one time this one episode i i can't even topanga and sean's connection i just don't feel like plays into really anything that 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 goes on because even when we come back next week and maybe i'm wrong but from what i remember i don't think is the case i don't think sean and topanga are ultimately like oh now we're buddies like it doesn't like come back again as like a you know Corey. i talked to topanga and me and her actually getting along now and like it doesn't come up again at all and i'm hoping i'm wrong but guys like what's this for what's it for i i like to say that people like the ingredients they don't like the meal and very often people are like, oh, I like that tomato. I like that. Like, this cheese is really good. It's like, oh, there are ideas here that were yeah. really, really great. But when we put it all together and we step back, it's not good. And that's how I feel about this. It's like great ideas. I love the idea of Corey and Sean, not Corey and Sean, Sean and Topanga having this one-on-one. I love the idea of Sean and Jack having a bonding moment over being sick. I love the fact of being meta and Eric getting to see like this uh, bizarro universe, but none of it actually gives me anything that I can use outside this episode. And as you said, none of it really even kind of sticks. So, yeah, I I mean, I really don't have anything else. I, it's so weird that that was the B story and Eric was the A story. Like, I, like it doesn't even make sense for it to be that way. It should have been the other way around, it seems like. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really okay. all I got. Hey, um, let's do the bra moment. Bra moment of this episode. Um, gosh, I know you have a good one. Why don't, why don't you go first? Why don't you go okay. first? Okay, so my bra moment, and again, it's just in the world of 2022. Sean goes, sorry, Jack says he's sick and has the chicken pox. And Sean is like, whatever, we're going to this baseball game. You're going to make us late for the baseball game. And she's trying to prevent us from going to the baseball game, even though we clearly are sick and have this virus running throughout our bodies. And the idea that these two white men would voluntarily go to a crowded stadium with a contagious disease, if not for someone being like, do not leave this room, <laughs> literally blocking the door. I was like, t- first of all, explains exactly why we are where we are. <laughs> yeah, all, I mean, clearly day. Sean would have been an anti-masker. Like, it, it all kind of makes sense now, so. <laughs> Absolutely. I just, again, I, I saw that when I was like, oh, you were willing to go to a stadium with a contagious virus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess my bra moment is uh, Sean hit Angela last episode and no one's still talking about it. Um, <laughs> You're right. I love that. You're like, that's my episode. Yeah, I'm still not, I'm still not over it. Uh, yeah, everyone's acting way, like it's all good. Let, let's, let's just t- talk about that. If we're going in order of the show, Sean physically abused Topanga's best friend apparently last week and this week she's like you know I just I feel like you and I don't connect everyone yeah I kind of want to take care of you funny enough I I know I probably should be taking care of like the girlfriend that you physically abused in front of her friends but here I am exactly oh god gotta love it okay um Feeney taught me Feeney taught me um Gosh, dude, what did Feeney teach me? Like, if you have immense talent, you should probably give it up. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, he tells Eric, like, yeah, I don't think you were any good on the TV show either. 
but he was literally just recruited by Juilliard. Like the like he couldn't just be like, hey, there's so many other avenues for you to pursue this. Well, I think he kind of, which leads me to my thing he told me, which is what comes easily goes. Yeah, easily. yeah, I guess that's the that's the and lesson. I, and I did like that moment of being like, it it did feel a little weird because we know that uh, William Daniels is a very seasoned actor, and the idea of him being like, you got to struggle, you got to go on auditions, you got to get rejected, and then all of a sudden, it did feel very much like a actor telling another actor. But it's also weird considering that we know Will Friedel, this isn't his first, like, this isn't his first acting chops. This isn't, like, Feeney telling that to one of the characters on the show. Like, it, yeah. it's weird that we have him telling Eric, and then we never, like, we... As you You're said, we so right, dude. That could have been such a powerful moment of, like, them, like, talking about how hard it is to be an actor and, we're like making that in line with Eric trying to find his way in the world and just talking about auditions and him just really getting into like the meat of it, like talking as the actor, William Daniels almost, mm -hmm. and giving this fatherly advice, which is just not what happens in that scene. And it would have been so nice just to hear William Daniels, the actor being like, hey, you're gonna go through all ups and downs in your career. You're gonna have to, you know, try when you don't feel like it, like anything would have been better than like yeah i didn't think you were very really good in that tv show either but if you want to keep going like just work at it like again i think if we move this episode if we move this episode to season four when they're looking at colleges yeah. even if this is like right before he gets into pembroke or whatever 100%. i think it makes so much more sense and you can kind of keep everything the same um and even have feeny give that speech but it makes more sense for where the characters are in life give him a, a, a like use that to pivot into like a scholarship for him to go to like school with like do something with his his newfound talent that he had for 28 minutes oh like, my god you just made it so like like eric does all of that work in season four to kind of get into college he doesn't think he's gonna get in we see him like get swindled by this other college that's not really working he goes into the school play nails it gets recruited doesn't get Hollywood, but Pembroke is like, yo, we saw you, your work. We would love to give you an acting scholarship. You're now in Pembroke and the show just continues. Like, that makes so much more sense. Ooh, you know what, Boy Meets World? Maybe you shouldn't have children writing your episodes anymore because these 30 something black men have figured it <laughs> out. But also to that point, it did feel like a cop out of blaming the kids. It's like, oh, we have children writers. And it's like, no, nah, I looked at a lot of your credits. You, you've you been doing things before. Yeah, it did feel awkwardly insulting to the writers who are probably responsible for writing that scene like yeah maybe it was like this kind of like self-deprecating thing but i i don't know like i can't imagine like a writer being like yo you should watch this episode that i wrote and like i can get work from it and it be this episode i i it's weird it's just weird also, as someone who lives in LA, the whole idea of like going to the studio, like there's no table read, we're directly on set. Like a lot of things, I was just like, ah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> yeah, there's no like, you, wait, we didn't have like a chemistry test. Like he just got brought right on. No way, no way. Okay, I was like, we're doing costume fittings. So, yeah, 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 something. I, yeah, I thought it was funny. Also, this would have been a perfect time to make a third seed kid joke. You know, just being oh, like- Oh yeah, yeah, something. Being like, yo, we've tried out several other actors. It's like a different actor every week. Something like kind of like, like plays into the fact that like- The history of the show. Yeah. Maybe something like where they talk about like the inconsistencies of the storylines. Like, like maybe Corey being like, so what grade am I supposed to be in the scene? Like something like that would have been, would have been fun for them to- You and I of... are killing it. We're killing I it. Know. Like, we should... <laughs> Gosh, dude, please let there be a, a bra meets world the way they're doing with Wonder Years where we just get a black Corey Matthews. Me and you, bro, we can write this. Uh, I think we just have our pilot, so anyway. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what grade are you giving this? I'm giving this episode, uh, I'm giving it like a C minus. Honestly, it's kind of a dud for me. So it's so funny. I was really, really struggling because I was like, I feel like C is good. C minus felt a little too judgmental. Yeah, and maybe. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I like your C minus, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a C. I feel okay. like I'm i'm favoring it but i feel like with your c minus it'll balance itself out <laughs> yeah and, and i mean i i do have to say that like 
I know we're kind of being really critical of of the show and of the relationships because you know this is the 90s like the blueprint for a lot of what strong television relationships would be hadn't even fully emerged yet but the fact that they still managed to make Sean and Topanga a part of the episode and carry the ongoing story arc that we've seen kind of saves this episode from being just completely written off for me. And I, I wish we would have got more of that. I wish those scenes would have been stronger, but you know, we take what we get on Boy Meets World. I think to me, to your point, the problem with this episode, cause you're right. It's like 25 episodes in the nineties. It's like sitcom, whatever. But the thing about Boy Meets World is it usually, it's remembered for trying to cover really heavy topics and and having these like meta moments and we just had and then there was sean so yeah. the idea that like you, you can make great television you can tell a story like this and give us depth you and i literally in the last 30 minutes came up with several <laughs> ways that this could just be better it's just like let's switch the roles a little bit here and Put, move this over there and it's like you could have given us a really good episode and it just feels like even for the 90s you guys kind of phoned it in yeah yeah i mean i i, I agree this uh, it's just not the strongest of a season that has very strong episodes absolutely okay um homework <sighs> Oh my God. Um, homework. You know, I've been watching the new season of Queer Eye on Netflix and okay. it's it like, bro, it's actually, it's very, very good. It's, it's them <laughs> post COVID, like helping people out businesses, people have been struggling, but like, here's the reason why I'm, I'm throwing the show out there because I've been watching a lot of reality television with my wife. Nice. Um, my life <laughs> <laughs> over the pandemic and so much of it is just like garbage like i'm watching 90 day fiance and i'm like oh i i don't care about any of these people i don't think any of them deserve love i don't wish any good things for these people like they just are awful and i feel awful after watching it but uh something about queer i really is chicken soup for the soul and one of the things that attracts me to that show which has always attracted me even the beginning the, the first series that happened in the early 2000s um was that it's the first time that i've seen men get attention on self-care in a way that's really profound and i honestly cannot think of another avenue in which male self-care is uh just at the forefront of a series the way it is with the show. And I mean, they, they treat everyone. They, they queer, uh, you know, uh, women, non like non-binary, you're like, yeah, they help everybody. But the whole point of just like self-care and specifically, like I said, with men, just because I've just never seen that before. Like I've seen self-care, you know, uh, with women my whole life. And I just, I've never seen it taken so seriously as with the show. And it, at a time of 2021, where like, I'm sorry, 2022 now, where we're like 670 days into this pandemic. I'm keeping track. Um, <laughs> you know, it can be really hard to like remember like the importance of self care, the importance of like, you know, taking care of yourself, taking care of your environment just to keep everything that's emotionally going on kind of on lock. And, um, you know, I just, it, it's been, it's been great watching it. And um, I just, I really encourage people to check out the new season. Sounds great. You know, um, it's, you were like, 90 Day Fiance is like chicken soup for the soul. I feel like, oh, sorry, you said that um, <laughs> Queer Eye is not, chick, not 90 Day I Fiance. Was say, I was gonna say 90 Day for Fiance is like the um, hot Cheetos for the soul. Oh, like, it know? is. It's Takis. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, you can eat it, but you're going to have fire shits afterwards. Like, it's not going to do anything beneficial for you. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, that to to me, I understand. I've also been watching some reality TV, and sometimes I'm just like, oh, this is just it's just meant to be enjoyed for what it is. We're not trying to solve world hunger. But then also, I would say for me, Queer Eye is hard because one, Anthony literally has nothing to do, and <laughs> the idea that he's literally just there to be the hot one bothers me. Um, two, it's this idea that we are given equal weight to everything that everyone does when in fact bobby does way more of a lift oh my gosh this dude remakes entire <laughs> homes like it's just crazy exactly and then anthony's like i don't know maybe peach jam and, and peanut butter and jelly and you're like 
what? What? That yeah. was your contribution? <laughs> um, someone told me that he gives like a fresh direct gift card. And I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> what are we doing? And then um, lastly, I will say that as a gay man, to kind of like I, I loved Kurai when it first came out, um, especially season one. I was I would one of the first advocates, I believe it was my homework. But like after a while, it just became like gay people for straight people and I was just like uh, you know what that's a very interesting take and I can I can definitely understand that like there's so many times where I look at um, my wife while we're watching it and I'm like is Jonathan really at an 11 all the time he is and I think like I will absolutely because my best friend and I have talked about this I think that he is I think that's naturally him like if you look at his uh social media or whatever he's like that is him and it actually made me appreciate people like him okay because like when you see it you're you just like this is a show you're always on but then when you see it continue you're like oh no that's just you and maybe i'm the one who like yeah. be uh, <laughs> less judgmental you know but also specifically karamo and uh anthony and like again like the ones who i'm like you're pretty much set dressing and you're pretty much like have you met a black gay man? Huh? Uh, like, that's where I'm like very much like, I don't know who this is helping. But. Well, I will say, Siege, I, I, I hear your objections. And actually, like, uh, there was a few seasons that I did not watch kind of for that same reason. I kind of got a little annoyed with it. But I, I will say that if you were to get bored and throw on this new season, I think it might win you over again. Because there are a few episodes I saw where I was like, wow, Kurama really healed this family's trauma in a really effective way. And yeah, yeah. yeah it, and, there, you know, it's there's some good ones. Take away anyone's um, work and achievement. They're clearly doing way more work than I am. <laughs> Um, and Jen, it's for me, I'm always like, great for those who need gay people in their life. I have plenty and uh, <laughs> I have better ones to choose from. But um, that is a very interesting perspective that you're like, dude, I'm I'm gay. I don't need to watch queer. I like I have enough gay friends that I don't need that that influence. That's an interesting perspective. Um, okay, so for me, my homework this week is if you want to talk about high school students. Let's get into Euphoria season two. I haven't seen any of it yet. Don't oh, spoil it. Oh my God. Have you seen season one yet? I've seen season one. Yeah. Okay. I've seen, wait, no, I've seen like the first five episodes of season one or four episodes of season, season one. Season two starts off with such intensity. And I'm just like, yo, we are not in Boy Meets. We are not in John Adams High. The, these kids are going through some things. Like we talk about wanting depth and character and um balanced storylines oh you're getting it and then some so. well, well here to add, riddle me this siege because part of the reason why i kind of fell out of watching the first season was because i didn't relate to any of the actual high schoolness of it like i was just like this does not reflect my experience in high school and it just kind of felt like one of those over the top like 90210 kind of things to where like no i get it the performances are very good it's very well written it's it, like all of that's very true but um there was something about it where i was just like oh this feels fantastical versus re gritty reality which is like what i think they're going for i feel like like so i've actually spoken to um gen zers who are in high school or whatever yeah. and for them they see it as a as you said a kind of like a hyper realistic worst case scenario type of show where it's like this is definitely things that are out there we're definitely looking at a world where kids are exposed to sex and drugs and violence and all these other things a lot earlier than i think adults would be comfortable with yeah but it's also amped up for television sure and 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 i would say that like it wasn't my high school experience no but do i understand the mindset that we're dealing with yes like to me it's really really funny to kind of watch things happen where you're like i, I i've been like where are your parents <laughs> like, like, yeah but then also this idea of that may not have been me in high school but that was me in college and if that was me in college, then they are just doing it earlier, which makes so much more sense because kids get exposed to things a lot sooner than I than I did. So anyway. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I, I might have to revisit it. I might have to revisit it because uh, I know I've been seeing it. Everyone basically talking about the show. So definitely got to give it another watch.
Okay, so yeah, that is my homework. Um, so sorry, that is my homework. Let's. Um, well, let, I mean, real fast, can we talk about what the actual homework is? What's the actual homework? Oh, oh no, 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 no! <laughs> I mean, I know what you're talking about, and so everyone knows we we get out to talk about this. Uh, by the time this releases, it will be out. Scream Five. I plan on having an entire moment for that later, but I wanted to go into it authentically. Um, actually have my like i i want to recommend things that i actually recommend and so yeah um scream yeah, 5 if, if you've be been listening to this podcast enough <laughs> you know that scream is siege's favorite movie he brings yes. it up all the time absolutely he's a, he's a matthew lillard stan with that tongue do stew like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> like you Leave are such alone. a stand for this movie and like like i literally i'm so excited to talk to you about this because i mean it, it, and we're, i'm sure like i was telling you like i kind of want to do a mini episode of just reviewing this movie but just real fast before you know the the new one comes up what are your thoughts on the scream sequels like i know you like the scream the original you love but two three and four do you have opinions absolutely okay I think this is should be reserved okay, for yeah. a different conversation. Just so everyone knows, if we want to do this or if we like watch the movie and we have time to do a mini episode, happy to do so. I can give everyone my feedback. I think that as with any series, there are good, there's bad. Um, I, I really do think that the franchise almost always remembers what it was trying to do. And you're never going to really capture the magic of the first one but the exploration is always kind of like our relationship with both technology and communication but then also friendships and trust like that's yeah. kind of like how i always see it and each and every time they really do kind of surprise you with being like hey this is where we are as the culture this is where we are with our cell phones this is where we are with our friends uh and trust action so yeah that's my interpretation i'm i again I'm, I'm gonna hold my questions just because i know we'll get into it at a later time um i just needed to to get some quick feedback on you before we uh go off into the movie um anything else anything else for this podcast i think i think we're good you guys keep reaching out to us uh you guys have been really good to follow us on instagram and uh reach out to us on TikTok. We always enjoy your commentary. You can find us at Run Meets World. You can find us on Twitch, apparently. That's another one that uh, we are trying. Give us, you know, let us know what you think. Um, ultimately, remember you can find me on uh, TikTok and Twitter at I Am Not Your Oreo. Um, I guarantee you I will give you screen feedback. Uh, and then also you can see me tweet about our other homework. Uh, and TC, where are you at these days? I am uh, not so much on social media, uh, but I have to say I am very, very excited to kind of explore Twitch and Discord and kind of these other avenues of um, communication with everyone who's a fan of the pod. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, please check out our links, um, you know, kind of explore these different avenues of communicating with us. We'd love to get your questions. Um, and we're going to try to do these streams, I guess, more consistently. I guess, if they work out, like we'll, we'll try to get these streams out there if you like them. So um, and also you guys can also check out video versions of these podcasts on YouTube. Um, we, we tend to post on the same day that we drop the podcast yeah absolutely that's pretty much it that's all i got all right so uh i guess it's time to remember to dream to try and to write better scripts <laughs> <laughs> write better scripts yeah that's right uh, later bros later bruh when the spawn meets world